I think fried foods is really nostalgic. Obviously, we fry a lot of food at Tasty. There's four real methods to frying food. We're gonna go over our naked fry, dredge, batter method, and the fried chicken fry. It kind of like gets you in a party mood when you see a bunch of delicious, freshly fried food. Like freshly fried food or bust. Frying is one of those things that you really need to have everything prepped before you get started. So you want a thermometer. If for some reason you have a grease fire, you want a tight fitting lid. Tongs are always great or a spider is even better. Drying rack over some paper towel. And salt and sugar are both desiccants, which just mean that they help draw out moisture, which helps to ensure a nice, really crunchy crust. So first we'll start with the naked fry. And French fries are one of those things you can easily get at pretty much any burger shop or fast food place, but they're so much better when you do them yourself. And all you need is some good rust potatoes. Slice them into even slices. This is totally up to your preference. You could do wedges, you could do very, very small shoestring potatoes. Today we're just gonna go for like pretty standard skin on uh, fries here. And then right after they're cut, you wanna get them into cold water right away. And that's going to help, one, kind of clean off a lot of the starch in the potato, and then also prevent them from browning. Even though we wash our potatoes first, there's still just kind of stuff that comes off. When we get that removal of that starch, it just helps to improve the crispy crunchiness of the fries. So it's a two-fold trick. And for these fries, we're actually gonna double fry them. We're first gonna fry in a lower heat. That's gonna help us cook the fries through. It's pretty much safe to say that anything that you're frying will most likely be between 325 degrees Fahrenheit and 375 degrees Fahrenheit. So you're just gonna fry them for a few minutes. They'll get a little bit of color, but they'll still look pretty pale. And then you wanna dump them out onto your drying rack and immediately sprinkle them with salt. You can kind of zhuzh them a bit with your hands carefully as well because they're gonna be hot. As you can see, like they're still very tender at this point. And while those hang out, we're gonna crank up the heat on our stove and get the temperature to 375 degrees. And so that's gonna be a much hotter oil and we're gonna get really, really dark, crunchy color in all of our french fries. And again, when they come out the second time, you wanna season them as well. A nice, big, flaky kosher salt is always really good. As you can see now, they're very crunchy, but they're soft and fluffy on the inside and a really great, rich color. Oh, this looks so good. So for a classic dredge, you need flour, eggs, and some sort of crumb. Whether it's breadcrumbs, panko, you know, crushed cereal, chips, it could be a whole bunch of things. So what you want to do is season your flour as well as your breadcrumbs. And we're going to do that with salt and pepper, freshly ground of course. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's pretty easy. What you want to do is make sure that whatever you're frying is very dry. Here we're going to fry some shrimp, which are super quick and so good. And then it's kind of just a matter of keeping your hands clean, which is the hardest part about dredging. So you want to have one hand for the wet and one hand for the dry. Make sure it's really floury, knock off any excess. And then I use this hand to cover it with pico. If you have huge gaps in your panko, you could dust it with a little bit of flour after that as well if you wanted to ensure that it was completely coated. These take almost no time at all. So we're frying at 350 degrees. As soon as they're golden brown, they're pretty much ready to come out. When they come out, you can see how the tail is very pink. So that's a telltale sign to know when a shrimp is cooked. Huh? <laughs> because shrimp has a tail, get it? Ah, so yum. This is one of my favorite fried foods. It seems, I don't know. Not very exciting, but trust me, fried zucchini done like this, it's like absolute heaven. The way you wanna cut these is you wanna have a bit of skin on all of them. So you, you cut them on a little bit of a bias into rings and then cut those into small pieces. You know, don't lose sleep over it. If they're a little bit off, like it's whatever, it's not the big of a deal. And what you need for this batter is flour, all purpose is great olive oil, kind of put it in the corner. You can make a well first too. Start whisking the oil into the flour. If you do this all at once, it can get pretty clumpy. So you want to work on one side and slowly work in the flour as you go. And then you have a perfectly smooth batter. And what makes this extra special is you're going to fold in some whipped egg whites. So this is going to give us a really cool aerated batter that's kind of like the same consistency as a tempura, but just a little bit of a different method. So you want to be careful when these are going in, you kind of want to break them up because they tend to clump together if not. Right between 350 and 375 degrees is where you want to be for these. A little bit of batter will come off, that's totally normal, don't worry. And you want to take these out when they are golden brown and crispy. As with all frying, you're going to put them onto a drying rack or paper towel afterwards and salt them to dry out the moisture and make sure that they're super crispy. If you're going to try anything from this video, you need to try these. All right, on to the famous buttermilk. I'm just saying that this recipe is famous, but I, I don't think that it, it is. 
It's going to be after this video. <laughs> it's pretty easy. What you wanna do the night before is get out some buttermilk. We're gonna season it with freshly ground black pepper, salt. So we've got cayenne, dry thyme, paprika, and garlic powder. Just mix it up to ensure that the buttermilk is totally seasoned and then add your chicken. What buttermilk does is it has a good amount of acid in it and it helps to tenderize the chicken. If you don't have buttermilk, you could use milk with an acid in there as well. The common ratio there is one cup of milk to one tablespoon of lemon juice or white vinegar. You wanna cover and put that in the fridge overnight. If you don't have overnight, you could just do it for a few hours, but the longer you leave it in there, the longer the brine can kind of penetrate and tenderize the chicken. So I wanna take this out of the brine and just let them kind of drain off a bit. You don't want them to be super wet when they go into your flour. And into the flour, I'm gonna use the same mixture, salt, pepper, dry thyme, paprika, garlic powder, and cayenne. Stir to make sure it's evenly in the flour. And then pretty easy. Just dip your chicken in and ensure that it's evenly covered in the flour. Because a little bit of the buttermilk is still stuck to the chicken, that's gonna act as kind of our liquid that the flour can stick to. You do wanna knock off any excess, because if there's huge chunks of flour that aren't really stuck to anything, you'll end up with kind of this like weird powdery fried chicken, which we don't want, and the ton will come off in your oil. So for this, I actually keep the heat of the oil up to 360. And the reason why I do that is because the temperature of the chicken is going to drastically drop the temperature of the oil. We're trying to cook our chicken around 325 degrees. If it goes much lower than that, it would be a little bit greasier, which is definitely not what we're going for. And then once it's out of the fryer, it's gonna darken up just a little bit more. So I would take it out when it's at this like nice, medium golden brown, I would say. It'll go up a few degrees, uh, continue cooking for a little bit. It's a really good idea to use an instant read thermometer and just make sure that all the chickens cook to 165 degrees. And remember, always salt things when they come out of the fryer. That's gonna make a great crust and also the last step of seasoning before you're gonna eat. Oh, so good. I love fried chicken. So when you're getting rid of your oil, first and foremost, you need it to cool down and never put it down the drain. Wait until the oil is completely cooled you can pour the oil into a jug. But as you can see, once all the oil is back in, it's actually pretty clear and all of the bits are staying at the bottom. And then that oil is actually good to use for a few more times. Fried food just has it all. It's crunchy, it's salty, it's juicy. Once you master a few of these techniques, you can eat all the fried food possible in moderation. It's kind of a fun thing that you can get your friends to do with you as well. You know, someone can be prepping the stuff that's about to be fried. Someone can be just hanging out, drinking while you're actually frying it. Yeah, I mean, that's fried food. I'm just really hungry right now and I want to go eat all this.